All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I'm going through and looking what people are teaching regarding Revelation 20. And so today we're going to pick on this guy right here. All right, and this is one of the most evil teachers in the world today. He's not very popular, but what he's teaching is pure evil. And it winds up with what 99% of the rest of the teachers are teaching. The rest of the false teachers, let's put it that way. And then, of course, it lines up with Nicolas Cage in the Left Behind movie. All right. So, and I wanted to give I'm going to guys... point out a number of different things. You see these tabs up here. I've got book uh, place marks or whatever for things so we don't have to go through the whole entire thing here but let's a hint tonight to just kind of yeah oh where are we at all right good okay so it's hot rod bible study now i'll i'd rather call it hot rod well never mind uh, this is redlands hrbs hrbs now let's listen to what he has to say kind of you know tickle your fancy if, if you will and allow you guys to maybe think about where we're going next and so i didn't want to exactly tell you exactly what it was but i wanted to give you a little clue and right. then maybe one of you can kind of will know exactly where we're going so i felt like the lord has put on our heart a, a book of the bible uh, it is in the old testament i'll give you a little clue it is a book of the bible in the old testament and it is a section of scripture in the whole chapters all the chapters of this book that the word of God or God is not mentioned in any part of this book. All right, so uh, I don't know why he doesn't just tell his congregation what book that is or what book he's referring to. And I don't even know what he's talking about. And I don't know why you would put that on somebody's mind and then teach Revelation 20 unless you want to distract them from what you're teaching. That's the only thing I can think of. But let's take a look at this word God. All right, and um, it's interesting. Uh, so how do I, how do I uh, show, you know, there's 39 books in the Old Testament, right? And am I got, do I got that right? And 27 in the New Testament 39 and 27 okay so he's talking about a book in the Old Testament that never mentions the word God and if you, you see here on the right hand side it says filter by all right so if you were to count those up you wouldn't come to 39 you wouldn't even come to 38 you come to 37 now one the one obvious that I think maybe maybe uh, oh, I, I don't know how to spell for dog's sakes uh, oh goodness sakes right, let's do it this way let's do it this way just bear with me Esther how do you spell Esther uh, how do you spell Esther well, Esther's not in there. Okay, so maybe he's talking about Esther. And the reason why I think of Esther, I guess, is because of, you know, long before I knew anything about the Bible, there was a show on television called Sanford and Son. And uh, Aunt Esther was one of my favorite characters on that show. And she was always thumping the Bible on Fred, laying it down on Fred, because Fred was that old sinner, the old heathen, All right? and she, she's just great. I love, love Aunt Esther. Now, uh, let's find the other one. Where's What's the other one? Well, I can't think of where it's at. Somewhere around here, I think, there's something missing. So, yeah, so uh, how do I do this here? Oh, I know. There's one way I could do this here. And that is, I'll just go like this way. No, that's too many words. Okay. 
So I, I don't know what word is in every single book of the Bible. I don't know. Let's do it this way. All right, so we got Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Psalm, and Isaiah. So, I mean, this who cares about this? I almost feel like I'm wasting time here. Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Isaiah. So there we go. We've got two books that don't mention the word God. Who cares? This is nonsense. But to, I guess to these guys, wow, wow, a book that never mentions God. Well, you know what? How about the Lord? You know, if you count these here on the right-hand side, you come to 36. So there's actually three books that never mention the Lord. Does that mean anything? No, not a thing at all. All right, and the one that's missing here is, let's see, how do I, how do I, uh, yeah, let's go here. Psalm, Proverbs, Isaiah, we noticed Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, excuse me, Song of Solomon, it's a Psalm, Proverbs, Isaiah, Psalm, Proverbs, Isaiah, so we have two right there that don't mention Lord, again, this doesn't mean anything. I feel like I'm wasting time. So let's get into this nonsense here. And to me, that's not a big deal, but it's just kind of dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so let's listen to the first thing, the first real thing he has to say that is nonsense, other than that nonsense. In flesh and dwelt among us. And we see that they're referring to Jesus Christ. And I love this because it said that he ruled with a rod of iron and he had a robe and, and on his thigh he had a name that was written, the King of King and Lord of Lords. And we learned something last week as many pastors have said that they believe that this was maybe possibly a tattoo that was on his thigh. And I believe it was Andrew who asked a couple of weeks ago, asked about this. But we learned as we studied last week that it, the Bible doesn't say that it is a tattoo. It says that it could possibly be on his robe, and his robe was veiled over his thigh. No, that's terrible. That's terrible teaching. Terrible teaching. So let's go to Revelation 19. It's not a tattoo. I mean, if it's a tattoo, you throw out your whole entire Bible. It would be... Uh, absolutely worthless and I'll show you why here in a second okay so we go to uh, Revelation 19 verse 16 and he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords that cannot be a tattoo it cannot be it, it, it is not a tattoo. Is it is it not a tattoo because just because I say it? No, it's because this would go against what we read already in Leviticus. Here, let's sit this way. Leviticus, Leviticus 19, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. So this is a problem here to even suggest that, oh, this is a tattoo. You know, we live in a world where people are getting tattoos like crazy. And it's just my opinion, but I think they're all ugly, every single one of them. And they defile every single person that gets one. And that makes them ugly. That's just my opinion. All right, you can hate me for it. But there's no way this is a tattoo. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. All right, so there's no way, no way at all that that's a tattoo. There's no way at all you should be su suggesting that's a tattoo. And at any time anybody brings this up, you should be pointing them to Leviticus 19 verse 28. Now of course it's interesting because when I was a kid growing up in the 70s 
Um, the only people that had tattoos were bikers and hookers. That's it. Of course, the world's changed a lot since since then. But all right, so let's move on to point number two. Spy, and this is where we get this King of King and Lord of Lords. Oops, that's so it. Learned... Hold on a second. This one right here. We know that we we're talking about a time that is called the Millennial Reign of Christ, and I want I don't want to get into this too heavily, um, but because it could be very lengthy, and I want I don't want the study to go long tonight. I, I want you guys to get the, the gist of what's going on here. So we know that millennial means in the Latin it means a thousand years. That's all it means. It's millennium. It means. Well, a... right, it means that in, in in Latin. What's it mean in English? I don't know a lick of Latin. Tell me what it means in English. I, I don't, you know, the, he, there's other times when he points, oh, well, he points to the Greek. Well, the Greek says this. Well, when you suggest that, now millennium is not in the Bible. I don't know if he's claiming that or not. It doesn't matter. But when you say this verse here in the Greek says blah, 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 what you're suggesting or implying is that you can't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. And I got a real big issue with that. That's a real big problem. And I take really extreme exception to that. Because you're saying you can't trust God. I believe the Bible I hold in my hands is from God. I know it is. I don't guess or wonder. I know the Bible I hold in my hands is the direct words of God. And so when you're pointing to a language that I don't understand at all... What you're saying is you can't, you're telling me I can't trust God. I can't trust the Word of God. All right, so let's continue. It's a thousand years in the Latin, and so this is where we get the millennial reign of, reign of Christ. There is three different views on this millennial reign. Uh, one, I'll just give, I'll give you guys a short version. Uh, they call one of them, it's called the amillennialist, and they get that A like an atheist, right? They do not believe in the literal reign of Christ for a thousand years here on planet earth. They do not believe in it. They say that this is just, and, and we're going to see through the scriptures that, that God is going to point out six different times, 1,000 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 years, six times. Hey, he's got something right. That's incredible. That's pretty cool, man. He's got something right. Now let's do something else here. He believes it's a thousand... That's a literal thousand. That's a problem. <clears throat> That's a big problem. It's. It, you, I'm telling you, it's a big, huge problem because what you're going to end up coining yourself into is this zombie doctrine that is nonsensical and it goes against the rest of the scripture, and I'll show it to you. And I don't believe that God would would put out 6,000 years in, in sequence like this and then for it not to mean a literal 1,000 years. And, and I love this, that some of the commentators says if we start taking the Word of God and start saying, well, that 1,000 years doesn't really mean that. So then how do we know the 70 weeks of Daniel mean this? Or how do we, once we start taking things out of the Bible and say, well, I don't think it really means that, then we're really starting to move the Bible really around in the Word of God. But there's also a group of people called the post millennials And they believe that Christ will come, but he won't come until after the thousand years. All right, I, I got to do this. I, I don't want to, I didn't want to do this, but I got to do this. All right, just as I pointed out, Psalm 50, verse 10, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. You take that literal and you say, well, only a thousand. After that, they don't belong to the Lord. It's nonsense, man. It's nonsense to make an issue out of this. It's ignorant. It shows just complete lack of understanding. And let me show you something here. All right. And Jesus is asked, you know, how many times should I forgive my brother? And then Peter came to him and said, Lord, oft, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven times. So seventy times seven. So that's 
So 70 times 7 is 490. All right, so after 490, you don't forgive them anymore. You see how stupid that is? You're missing what's the teaching. You're missing what's being taught here. And it just drives me nuts that these people would sit here and lie in front of God and everybody. And to me, this is a lie. To say it's a thousand year period coming after Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven. That's a, it's an utter lie. It's disgusting. It's filthy. And I'm going to show you. And he will come to establish the new heaven and new earth but he will not come and rule and reign here on planet Earth. But then we get, as many of us as believers, we believe the premillennials, and we believe of a literal thousand-year reign here on planet Earth with Christ will come and rule and reign here on planet Earth. And, and imagine this, that there will come a time that Christ will come and rule and reign, and he will go and descend down into Jerusalem, and he will be ruling and reigning from planet Earth for a thousand years. Do you hear what he said there? I'm not sure this is the point. It might be that I'm wanting to make, but listen to what he says here. There will come a time that Christ will come and rule and reign, and he will go and descend down into Jerusalem. He will go and descend down to Jerusalem. Now we got a, a big problem. All right, let's see what the Bible says. Where's Jerusalem at? Is it over there in the Middle East? Are we of the world is Jesus of the world this is that his city a city full of people who are perverts <clears throat> and reject <clears throat> excuse me and reject the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is that is that God's city over there now on earth no it's not but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So let's go to Revelation. I mean, this is, you got to be willingly ignorant, man. You got to be just lack understanding. It's unbelievable. Right? The city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. All right, and this is talking about Jerusalem, which is above. Now, Jesus promises, he says, I go and prepare a place for you. This is the place that he is preparing for us. And I, John, saw the holy city, knew Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. So, the natural man received not the things of the Spirit. So, the natural man is not going to be able to recognize and see that we are strangers in a strange land and that our holy city is above and we wait for that city. Now, we put our hope into that city. We do not at all put our hope into an earthly city that is here on the earth today. Not at all. That place over there in the Middle East is full of filth and wickedness and they reject the Lord Jesus Christ it is not my city all right and that should be very clear I mean that's this is simple stuff man this is not complicated rocket science but but he will be ruling and reigning from planet earth for a thousand years. All right. So it's interesting. For he's going to be ruling and reigning for a thousand years, and then it's over, and Satan takes over, or you take over. I don't know what 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 goes on. I don't know. I think that's the point I was wanting to make there about uh, the Holy See. So let's skip forward to the twenty minute mark. A thousand year uh, peace, and so we're going to get into that as we as we move forward. Go ahead. There will be unbelievers, right? I'm talking about the millennium. There will be unbelievers, right? Well, 
and the and the and there'll be peace. And yes, and we're going to get to the part. There's going to be. And yes, there will be peace, and unbelievers, after Jesus comes. That's what he says. That's not what the Bible says. Unbelievers, but and and that is partially like like uh yeah that's partially the reason why he's going to allow Satan to come back. And, and I'll get into that as we as we get a little bit forward. Yeah, I can't answer it now. Can't answer now because I, I'm trying to sell you a load of BS. I got a sign behind me to prove it. I'm trying to sell you a load of BS. So I'm not going to answer your question right now. Well, I'll go ahead and answer it right now. This guy's full of BS. You understand what he's saying? Just in case, just in case you're uh, not sure, there will be unbelievers also. In this thousand years. Okay, now, it's important to understand what he said back here. And that is, his idea of a thousand years is after the return of Jesus. Alright, so in his mind, he or his teaching, whatever you want to say, he's saying that there's after Jesus comes, there's going to be a thousand years, and during the thousand years, there's going to be unbelievers. I, that, I mean, I hope you understand that, and I hope you understand, because this is so important. Because it's not true at all. And once you can see that, how wicked and evil that is, then you can then I think the veil is lifted and you you can see the wizard behind the curtains. All right, so let's walk through this. Now this is imp this you know I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we are in that this thousand years. There's no question about it. But this guy is teaching we are not in the thousand years and the thousand years comes after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right so <laughs> it's unbelievable man it's like it or I don't read the Bible at all it's like it really is it seems to me like this guy does not read the Bible at all and he doesn't even believe what little parts of the Bible he knows Because Jesus very clearly is asked about the end of the world. And the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. There is not an extended 1,000 bonus years at all. You know what? I get fired up about this. Now there's something else that he talks about that's really going to blow a gasket. And let me keep us. I'll get further into this, but just this is as simple as it gets, fellas. What shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it, it, it's the end of the world. It's not rocket science, man. That's it. Uh, there's something I want. I want you to see, or I want you to hear, and then I'll get further into that. In the, in the, and there'll be peace, and yes, we're going to get to the part there's going to be unbelievers, yeah. but and, and that is partially like, like, uh, yeah, that's partially the reason why he's going to allow Satan to come back. And, and I'll get into that as we, as we get a little bit forward. Uh, we'll get into that. I don't want to let the, the rabbit out of the hat so quickly. Uh, so, yes, yeah. yeah, this guy's trying to pull a magic trick, he doesn't want to let the rabbit out of the trick out of the hat because he's trying to trick you guys. Christ and yes know this and, and, and I think Pastor Ed alluded to it a couple of weeks ago in the scriptures that he was speaking about that people asked in the in the tribulation period will there be people that will be saved for Christ even though they, that now the church is gone and the answer is understand the scenario the church is gone so Jesus has come in the clouds of heaven 
All right, so you it's after the end of the world, right? And he shall send his angels, hold on a second. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. All right, so this is the church being lifted up or raptured away, whatever, however you want to describe it. This happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Hey, make no mistake about it. All right, so this is the scenario that he's talking about is after we are raptured, if you will. Oh, that will be saved for Christ, even though the, the, now the church is gone. And the answer is yes, but we need to remember that. Hey, just in case you forgot what he's saying, I apologize. I talk too much. Stood up for Christ, and yes, know this, and, and, and I think Pastor Ed alluded to it a couple of weeks ago in the scriptures that he was speaking about that people ask in the in the tribulation period, will there be people that will be saved for Christ, even though they, that now the church is gone? And the answer is yes, but we need to remember that they will be beheaded. Remember that. There was a, a time a couple of years ago that there was actually, I think it was interesting if you read the story, it was Gucci who was making a bunch of guillotines and the U.S. government was... All right, all right, so uh, let's go back. I think I've left something out, so I'm, I'm going to touch on that. Hold on. Yeah, yes, you're absolutely right. You, you hit it right on the nose. And so here in verse 4 it says, And I saw the thrones, and they who sat on them, um, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Uh, one of the things that you notice in this uh, section of scripture, you see that it's thrones. It's in the plural. It's more. All right. So hold on a second. You see, we will not experience the second death, right? We will be priests of God and we will reign a thousand years and God will give each and every one of us a place on planet earth to rule and reign over and, I, and as I was studying for this uh, one of the things that, that Pastor Ed said he said that hey uh, I, I'm going to just be happy to rule over a place like he's going to give me some small place like like Mentone he's gonna, that's what he's going to give me to rent Mentone and, and I thought to myself if Pastor Ed's only getting Mentone then he must be giving me Bryn Mawr you know so you're gonna rule over me in those towns? Is that what you're? Is that what you're teaching? And was buying them, was buying guillotines, and it's interesting to me that it says at the end of time that that people will be beheaded, will be. All right, so hold on a second. There's something here I'm missing. And there will be no more presidents, no more dictators, no more politicians, no more of any of it. Christ will rule and reign here on planet earth for 1,000 years. He will rule and reign here. And you can imagine what kind of a time this will be. And, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you because I want you to see that this is going to be a time of, the, the world has never seen, a time of peace. It is going to be a time that Christ has always intended for the world to be. Since the book of Genesis, and we saw as Adam and Eve, as they fell into, we see that the paradise is going to be restored to what God originally wanted it to be for a thousand years. Uh, one of the commentators, and some of you guys might think of this as comical, but one of the commentators shared that he believed that, that not only that, though, that, that we will also, as we come back and rule and reign with Christ, we that have believers who have gone and died, that we will come back in our, in our uh, resurrected body. We will come back in our new bodies. We will come back that we will no longer die anymore, so we will be able to procreate. I thought it was interesting that he was talking about procreating the world. The population of the world will exceed in this thousand years because it will be peace on earth like I've never heard of before. Did you hear that? For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven.
All right, let's go back. We'll come back in our in our uh, resurrected body. We will come back in our new bodies. We will come back that we will no longer die anymore. So we will be able to procreate. I thought it was interesting that he. He was talking about procreating the world. You know, procreate is another word for dirty sex, right? Uh, what do you say, procreate or dirty sex? Filthy, dirty, hot, steamy sex. It's the same thing. And it's not different. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not, and he's not talking about having babies. He's talking about having hot, steamy, filthy, dirty sex. And just listen to this pervert talk. The world, the population of the world, will exceed in this thousand year because it will be peace on earth like I've never heard of before. And these things will happen. And, and I, some one of the, as I was reading through that, he said that we will go back to an age that we will, will no longer have any aches or pains as we come back in that new body. And, and a lot of people, a lot of commentators have said that that age of that body will be from where they always pick out the age of 33. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. And the reason why they say that this is the reason with the year that Jesus went to be with the Lord, but this is the time that they believe that our, our new bodies will be in that age. And I don't know about you guys, when I was in my 30s, I didn't have a lot of pain in the world. And everything's All right, so, <clears throat> I, so he's saying that You'll be like 33 years old without any pains and just having jackrabbit sex for a thousand years. And th this is why I say all these people, they are driven by lust. They are mocking the word of God. They are deceiving People, Jesus says in Matthew 24, in the last times, that there will be deceivers. Here, let me find a quote. Jesus is asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing is that Jesus says is, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And this is what this guy's doing. What he's selling is a thousand years of pain free sex, hot, steamy, dirty, filthy sex for a thousand years as you had when you were 33 years old. That's what he's selling. Oh, that sounds so wonderful to these guys, not to me. I'm looking because I think of all the pain that I've had to endure in my life because of broken hearts and because of the filthiness of lust and for what a few minutes of pleasure you think of you know people dying you know uh, you think of childbearing for a woman she has to go through great pain to deliver the child. But he's not looking at, at, at it from that angle. The only thing that he's got on his mind is being 33 years old, having jackrabbit, hot, steamy, filthy, dirty sex. That's all he's thinking about. He's not thinking about all the troubles that come from people having sex. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Let me just read this for you, okay? It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 
and the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. All right, now is there any is there any question? When this world passes away, there is no more lust. There's no more hot steamy sex. No more hot steamy stinky dirty filthy sex, all right? That's all done away with at the end of the world. All right, so let's get into this real quickly. I'll try to make this real quick. So Jesus is asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? And the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. The sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven and all the earth will mourn. And in... Uh, Luke chapter 21 Jesus says men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven everybody's gonna know that's the way God has made us that there's gonna be absolutely no doubt whatsoever not just with humans but with all the creatures in the world all the animals are gonna know when it's the end of the world and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we're all gonna know it's gonna be obvious beyond any doubt whatsoever it's gonna be crystal clear it's the end of the world and it is judgment day it's the great day of the Lord. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, then are we lifted up. So the angels gather together his elect. Right, when you see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. All right, so let's go to 1 Corinthians Let's well, hold on a second. Let's go to First Thessalonians four first, and then we'll go to First Corinthians fifteen. To me, this you put all these together, it's crystal clear. In First Thessalonians four, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right, who's the Lord? It's Jesus. I mean, come on, this is not rocket science. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall, be, uh, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. So the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in here. This is not different events. You know, it's not like the dead in Christ rise and then a thousand years later, those of us which are alive and remain. No. Man, that's stupid to even teach that. And you see so many people that are teaching that. And they're taking advantage of people that do not read their Bible. All right. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay. So we compare that with. 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. The last trump signifies the end of the world. It's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this Corruptible must put on incorruption, the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So when this happens, there is no more death. There, so if there's no more death, there cannot be any more unsaved people. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's it. 
There are no more unsaved people. That's the end of the world. This world passes away in the lust thereof. This world's coming to an end, and the lust thereof. So there is no more dirty, rotten, stinky sex, or whatever you want to call it, hot, steamy sex, whatever. That's all gone. It's all done away with. The world that we're putting our hope into is much better than that hot, stinky sex. Much better. And uh, so disgusting what these guys are teaching. It really is. <clears throat> Alright, so in in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, um, you know, uh, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So when we go to Revelation 20, and it talks about the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Well, it's Jesus. Jesus is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. We are partakers of his resurrection. We are not the first resurrection. All right, I don't know what in the H-E double hockey sticks this, these people are teaching. Uh, why are you ignoring the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? It just, I mean, I know why they're doing it, because they want to peddle their BS doctrine of, uh, you know, hot, steamy sex. Really. It's just, I, I don't, they just, I don't think they see it. Honest, honestly, I don't think they see it. I don't think they see how disgusting their doctrine is. All right, so become the first, Jesus has become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So, we are partakers of his resurrection. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we will be resurrected with him. He has led the way for us. He has traveled where no man has gone, and we follow him. See, Jesus has died, defeated death, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven. And we that are Christ will follow the path that he has already taken for us. See, he is leading the way for us. It's not complicated, right? So therefore, he is the resurrection. Jesus even says, I am the resurrection. And you all still can't figure it out? Jesus is the resurrection. And he plainly says, I am the resurrection. Well, you think there's a resurrection before Jesus? That is great. I mean, you think you're going to get resurrected before Jesus? No, it's too late, sucker. I mean, this, this stuff is just, it's not complicated. And, it, I mean, this is amazing, really. He plainly says, I am the resurrection and the life. And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And what do we got here in Revelation 20? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection resurrection on such the second death has no power whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die 
All right. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. On such, the second death has no power. Are you able to see the connection here? He is actually saying the very same thing that we're reading in Revelation 20. It's amazing. Absolutely incredible. All right. So, and then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and, and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Then the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Genesis 3, verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. See, Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all iniquity forever. All right, destroying death forever. So because there is no more of that, there's no more sin. No more sin, no more death. All of that is done away with. Therefore, you cannot have unsaved people. All right, you cannot have dirty, rotten, stinky, hot, steamy sex, whatever. None of that. That's all done away with. It's all done away with. Behold, what's he say here in Revelation 21? Behold, I make all things new. Right, it's incredible. It's incredible. Behold, I make all things new. So I'm going to finish it on this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever.